Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Mr. Connor R. Sullivan coming at you with some practice tips and performance advice for the GMEA High School Symphonic Band grades 11 through 12 trombone lyrical etude for the 2024-2025 school year. I hope you find this video useful and helpful in your practice and best of luck to you on your audition. All right, let's get started. Now the first thing you always want to look at when reading an etude like this is what's in the top left of the music here. We have lento, quarter note equals 58, 4-4 four, four time, 4 sharps in the key signature, and the word espressivo. Now if you don't know what lento means, it just means slow or sluggish. Espressivo means expressive, and notice how they sound pretty similar too. All right, next we have 4-4 four, four time, so four beats per measure with the quarter note getting the beat. And finally, four sharps means we're in the key of E major. Now, if you're not sure how to figure out the key, one easy trick is to look at your scales and see what scale matches the key of your etude, and voila, your key is E. This means we have F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, and D sharp, and every other note is natural unless otherwise notated. Now, there's another way of figuring out how to find the key with any key signature, but I won't go over that right now in this video. Let me know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in. Next, let's talk about this weird looking clef here. This is known as tenor clef. It's a member of the clef family known as C clefs. That's because this middle part always shows where middle C is. If you're not sure what middle C is, it's a reference to the C at the center of an 88 key piano keyboard. Also the C just above the staff in bass clef. With that in mind, you can think of reading tenor clef as up five notes from bass clef. For example, the first two notes in tenor clef here are B natural and E natural. The same as these notes in bass clef. Now, let's get into the music some more. Um, I always encourage my students to identify patterns, similarities, and think more deeply about music than just what the notes and rhythms are. For example, are there any places where the music resembles a scale or an arpeggio? Any intervals that repeat? Or do any themes appear multiple times? Like these two phrases repeating a little higher the second time? Same with these two as well. Looking for these things, one, makes the etude less intimidating after first glance. Two, allows you to make musical decisions based on these repeated themes, scales, motifs, etc. And three, it makes the etude more interesting and helps give more of a performance mindset in your preparation. As far as dynamics and musicality goes, there's a good bit already provided on the page that tells us where the highs and lows are. For example, we have this forte, which tells us the climax of the entire etude. The highest dynamic happens here, so we must demonstrate that in our playing. Also be careful not to get too loud too soon on this crescendo. Start the crescendo at around a piano or mezzo piano, and exaggerate the growth all the way until the highest note, this G sharp, and finally fade out down from mezzo forte to finish it out. This dynamic contrast will definitely set you apart in the audition room. I'd also like to point out these tenuto markings. Usually you'd see these to denote full value note length, but that doesn't really make sense in this context since it's already within a slur. Interpret those two as more weight and air emphasis. Uh, treat it like tension and release, and it will come across much more effectively. I would also recommend recording yourself often, whether you have the best mic ever or record from your phone's mic. It doesn't really matter as long as you're listening to yourself frequently. And if the dynamic contrast and musicality is coming through on the recordings clearly, 
they will for sure come across to the judges too. My final bit of advice to you is start by practicing slowly with a metronome and focus on accuracy in all ways. You'll be judged on tone quality, technique, rhythmic accuracy, articulation slash style, dynamics slash phrasing, and interpretation slash tempo. So it's important to make sure you're not only playing the etude in time and with the right rhythms, but that the tone is the best quality for every single note, all the phrasing works, and all of these little details have to be there in order to have a successful audition. If you put in the time during your practice sessions to perfect every aspect of this etude, I think you'll be proud of the work you put into it, be rewarded with the satisfaction of good practice, and hopefully with a position in the honor band, maybe even advancing to the next round for the Allstate audition. I think that's about everything I have time for in this video, but if you'd like some more in-depth practice methods and advice, let me know in the comments. I might be able to put out some more videos with more specific commentary if there's interest. Thanks for watching, and I hope you find this video useful and helpful in your preparation for the audition. Happy practicing, and I'll see you on the next one.